All right, everyone, we are here at episode number eight of Photo Redux, the series where I take my old, old photos that kind of make me cry just a little bit when I look at them today and start fresh, edit them uh, with new software, new eyes, uh, and we'll have a lot of fun. So this is the last episode of the calendar year, 2017. Episode nine will be in 2018, which is next week. It is five degrees outside right now with a low of about negative 12 here in Lincoln, Nebraska, it's freezing. So I am more than happy to be cooped up right here in my home office recording this video for all of you. So this photo was taken on January 18th, 2010. So almost eight years ago, and it was with a Canon 5D Mark II and the Canon 17 millimeter tilt shift lens. Uh, as far as tilt shifts go, I've talked about this in the past. Next to my uh, old Funk Buster 15 millimeter fisheye, the 17 millimeter tilt shift lens is one of my favorites. Now uh, that and like the 14 millimeter uh, F2.8, those were like my favorite primes. I, I really, as far as primes go, Back in the day, I was a huge fan of ultra wides, like ultra, ultra wides. And the 17 gave me the best of both worlds because it gave me uh, an ultra wide uh, focal length, but it also gave me the opportunity to shift and correct for rectilinear lines when I was doing architecture photography. And that lens factored into a lot of my architecture photography, but then also gave me this effect uh, of when I tilt the lens uh, where I can create a kind of a different off angle plane of focus where one side of the frame is in focus and then the other side goes out of focus. It's it's unnatural, but it's really cool, especially at night. This photo was taken, uh, I remember it was one evening, I was in New York City just roaming around uh, just random streets with my camera and my tripod and I saw this awesome neon sign. It was some uh, I don't know if it was a church or something. Well, it must have been a church because it was a big cross, a neon cross. And it said like, I think it said like, get right with God. And you'll see it. Uh, but some of the, the letters, the illuminated letters were out. The lights were out. So it just all in all just had a great atmosphere to it. And when you see here, I took brackets for HDR. And in this situation, unlike a lot of the previous episodes, HDR actually is totally called for here. Without a doubt, uh, you want a tone map because at night, when you have these very bright neon lights and then just a lot of darkness throughout the rest of the scene, HDR helps kind of wrangle all of that uh, tonal information in, especially with a sensor as uh, not as strong as today's sensors with the Canon 5D Mark II. We've come a long way since then for sure. So the tone mapping, I don't have a problem with. It's just kind of the stylization and this stylization I wouldn't say it's bad compared to, again, some of the other episodes, but it definitely is uh, kind of representative of who I was back then. A lot of HDR and a lot of this very, very aggressive split toning with a lot of heavy greens in the shadows going for this kind of post-apocalyptic thermonuclear look. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a second, but all in all, uh, I'm excited about this photo and I hope you are too. Now, before we jump over, I just want to remind you, hit that thumbs up button if you're liking this video and also smash that subscribe button. Next to it, there'll be a little bell icon. If you click that, you'll get notified every time new videos come out. So with that, let's jump over to the computer and I'm going to walk you through. In this video, we're going to be using a combination of Adobe Lightroom CC, the, the new Adobe Lightroom CC, and then Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. And I'll walk you through why in a second. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom CC, and yeah, yeah, you see, it's uh, it's screen worthy, but uh, you get the idea. If you followed my work back like eight years ago, this was very much the style that I was into. Uh, I I tone mapped a lot, but I also went into that uh, really kind of post apocalyptic look, especially in the shadows. I really liked veering towards the neon green, and I'm red green colorblind, so like if I can see it, there's a problem. But all in all. Uh, composition wise, I really like it. Stylization wise, it's a bit much. I, don't, I wouldn't uh, really go this heavy. I mean, just kind of look over here in this building. I totally crushed the shadows there. Uh, let's go into the histogram and you can see that I'm really pushing everything towards the shadows and black point. Uh, and you can tell, I mean, very, very heavy contrasty uh, look. Uh, the I have this weird stuff going on over here. I don't know if I tone mapped the image uh, very well, but tone mapping is definitely important. So with that, you know, I love the composition. This is where I use a tilt shift lens. And because 
I tilted the lens to the right. That means that my plane of focus was shifted more towards the left vertically as opposed to normally when your plane of focus is horizontal. Uh, and you can see that over here, the plane of focus is this kind of swatch right here, uh, kind of skewing to the left and then to the right and to the left of that, it's out of focus, which is uh, kind of what you get with tilt shift lenses. Also kind of a very popular effect that you can get with tilt shift lenses is that miniature world kind of like toy figurine look when you have kind of an above vantage point from your subjects, typically if you're you know, standing on some sort of elevated position, if you tilt the lens upward, uh, your plane of focus is towards the bottom. Remember, it's the opposite direction of the where you're tilting the lens. So if you're tilting upward, plane of focus is on the bottom and you get that really cool effect where the, everyone looks like these little figurines. So if we go to the grid view here, uh, you'll see, let's walk through the brackets. Now this is where, you know, tone mapping is really helpful. Uh, when we go through each bracket, take a look at the transition of the light in the neon here. So, you know, I, I do, I love this scene. Like, let's just go back for a second. You know, just overall, I do love the scene. I love this neon cross. It's just something fantastic about it. Apparently this is St. Paul's house uh, and it is in New York City. But um, if we go through, you see how you have all of this nice bright detail, even in the reflection over here. And then as we go out, we're going to start losing that detail, but we're going to get shadow detail. So here, I mean, we've essentially lost the form of those letters. And then as we go even further, we have all the detail here in the buildings and everywhere, but the highlights are gone. So uh, that is where the tone mapping is really helpful. Now, the th process here is going to be kind of funky. Normally, what I would like to do is go here and I take my white balance dropper and I get a white balance right there. And you can see how that does a really nice job of getting rid of the street light, that tint. Um, the problem is uh, what I would do if this was classic is I'd go to photo and I'd go to copy edit settings. And then I'd go normally here and select all of these photos and then go to photo and then paste edit settings. Unfortunately, that is not currently supported. Uh, you can't even go to a single photo in the grid view and go to paste edit settings. You actually have to go to the one up view and then you'd be able to go here and paste the edit settings. It is unfortunate. I'm sure it's something Adobe is going to fix in future updates. Uh, the other thing that uh, you can't do currently, which is why I need to go to Classic, is you cannot merge for HDR or Pano. So I'm going to bring all of these original DNG files into Classic. We'll do the sync settings for the white balance, and then we'll tone map. And then we'll take that tone mapped original DNG, bring it back into CC, and then work not optimal, totally get that, totally admit it. But for me right now, I am falling in love hard with Lightroom CC, not just saying that. I love having all of my photos in the cloud, take my iPhone, take an Android phone, take my iPad, take another laptop, launch it, and I have access to everything immediately. And that's pretty awesome. So I know that Lightroom CC will get better, not trying to sell you on it. If you're into classic, stick with it. But I think uh, we're gonna see some really cool things going forward, which is why I'm kind of going uh, into this. And I'm going to create a video walking you through that workflow of how I'm migrating over. So with that, let's go here. Let's uh, undo all of these changes just so that I'm back with uh, the originals. And then I'm just going to go here, go to file, save to, and then I'm going to select original plus settings, which will save out the originals and we'll import it into Lightroom CC. All right. So here we are in Lightroom Classic CC. Let's go into one of these photos. We'll hit W for white balance, and then we'll click here, get that same white balance result. Now this time, like I said before, I'll go back to the grid, um, select all, and then we'll go to sync settings, check none, and just select white balance. So that synchronizes the white balance all in one fell swoop, which is really nice. I mean, again, just one of those things, but stick with it. Um, I promise you're gonna see some really cool things coming with CC, so with that, now we can go again, let's select all, right click, we'll go to photo merge and select HDR. All right, so there's nothing moving in this photo, uh, so I'm gonna set the degos to none. Now, this is what happens when you don't have any of the auto settings turned on. And I talked to you about this in episode seven of Photo Redux where I was really kind of talking up auto. And I really like it here too, so watch. When I click on auto settings, boom. I mean, great, great job. Uh, this is exactly what I would want to do to the photo. 
you know, I don't need to do it afterwards. Normally, I would never use auto, but I know that Adobe has been working really hard on that. So again, let's turn that off and then turn it on. This gets me pretty much right where I want to go. So I'm going to click merge to go back to classic. And then what I'm going to do is export this original file and import it back into Lightroom CC. And so here, this is the tone mapped photo. Looks pretty good, just like before. And again, kind of a mild inconvenience between not being able to sync white balance and having the tone map. Uh, this again is the uh, original photo. So let's work with this here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, healing and then I'm just going to get rid of that little specular highlight. Uh, let's hide that there. Uh, so that's looking good. Happy with that. Uh, next thing we'll, we'll do here is uh, under the white balance, even though I used kind of a custom white balance, I do want to warm the temperature up just a tiny bit, just like that. Uh, and that's looking really good. Uh, next thing, let's go here. Let's add some contrast. And what you're seeing here, these sliders, that's what the auto did. So you actually preserve the auto settings in the DNG. It's not just like auto and then when you hit merge, those settings are baked in. Those are actually the settings that were set when I clicked on auto, which is really cool. Again, you have the total control. Um, let's see, highlights. I'm gonna bring those down just a little bit here and just look at the detail with the tone mapping. Just like look over here, let's bring the highlights up. See how you're losing that, but we get even down to the actual neon bulbs themselves. And that's really awesome. I still wanna add a little bit more contrast, not too, too much more. Uh, and then let's go ahead here, tone curve, add an S curve, which adds even more contrast. Let's get that little bit of gray because there's so much shadow there. I really like that. Then let's go over here to vibrance. Let's bring those vibrance down a little bit. It's a bit too strong of the colors. It's also gonna bring the saturation desaturated just a little bit, actually a little bit more. Let's go here. All right, now what I want to do is go to the uh, oranges, and this is something I do miss. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's coming, but the target adjustment tool in Lightroom Classic, where you can have this little kind of tool that whatever color you put it on, it'll highlight that respective color in HSL. Hopefully that's coming. Um, let's open up the saturations, even though I desaturated, um, let's open up the saturation and the luminance here. Uh, just because, watch, if I reset the saturation, that, that orange is a bit too strong for me, so uh, this kind of calms that down a little bit. Then under effects, definitely a split tone. For the shadows, I'm gonna go over to the blues, somewhere right around there. Highlights, let's add a little bit of something like that. And because we desaturated, I have a little bit more wiggle room. If I had the saturation at zero or somewhere in the plus, I think this would get really intense. But because we desaturated, I have a little bit of play with my split toning. Now I'm gonna go ahead to my radial filter. Let's just create a selection here, put it right there. Next thing, let's right click over here, reset all sliders. Let's drop that exposure so that we kind of really kind of target the center. That's a bit too much there. Something like this. That's looking really good. Uh, we'll open up the shadows a little bit. Again, I don't want to get too, too dark. Uh, and then let's go here back into develop under effects, add some clarity. And let's see what dehaze will do. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Normally, I don't use dehaze very often, uh, mostly because I find that it, in, in landscapes, it can if you apply too much of it, it could really ruin it. But here, I actually like that a lot. Here, kind of, that's interesting. That's almost going back to the original photo. Um, but let's go here with a dehaze. That is looking good. And then let's apply our sharpening. So for sharpening, zoom in here, press and hold the option key while dragging on the sharpening amount. That turns it grayscale. So let's get it until we start to see some good detail there. And then let's zoom out option while dragging on masking. And until we get the outline, so something like that, that's looking uh, really nice. And then finally, I want to go to the point curve here and add a little bit more kind of warmth in the highlights and bring the shadows a little bit more blue. So something like that. 
And so let's just see here the before. Here's the uh, original. This is what we did with stylization. Add a little bit of a vignette, actually. Really draw the eye towards the center of the frame. And let's adjust the brownness. Let's make it even more round. Cool. So overall, I really like this. To me, this is definitely more in line with the stylization, the kind of aesthetics that I that appeals to me today. And if we go, uh, let's just, yeah. So this is the photo there. Actually, one last thing I'm going to do. Take an adjustment brush here. Let's right click reset all settings. Um, and what I want to do, let's turn auto mask off, drop the brush size, and drop that feather. Let's just draw right here. Let's open that up a bit. I want that sign to be a little bit brighter. Same thing with the parking sign right there. I just need these little bit, these little elements to, to pop off uh, just so that it's not just the the uh, neon cross but we have these other elements that are brighter that are drawing the eye throughout the frame also this reflection here in the window and actually let's get this window too so this actually is a good illustration of how i edit typically is um i'll get to almost the, uh, the final point and i'll be like oh you know what? let me do a few more things let me do some local adjustments here and there so this is definitely i'm glad you got an opportunity to see this and so with that um here is the photo and then you know wow just intense compared to this. You know, one thing I do like in this photo, I like how you have more of the sky. So what I'm gonna do is go to, back to the adjustment brush here, and let's just see if I brighten the sky. Yeah, you see you're getting a little bit more. Actually, undo that. I wanna create a new selection. Uh, and then let's just kind of draw through the sky here. Brighten that up. And let's go ahead and really, yeah, this is looking, this is looking a lot better. Let's add a lot of contrast in the sky there. Um, and let's go ahead and add a little bit of dehaze to bring out a little bit more definition there. So you can see that detail a little bit more. So now, now, now we're done. We'll go back here. That is the original, just way too intense, over sharpened. Uh, colors are in your face. Something's going on with the tone mapping uh, to something that uh, to me is just a lot more visually pleasing. I think um, it represents the the natural, I guess, natural color and tone of this photo of the scene itself. And uh, just overall, uh, a photo that I'm really happy with. Actually, one last thing I'm going to do. Let's go to healing right there. I want to get rid of that. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, that was distracting me. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photo Redux. One more time, hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. Hit the subscribe button with the little bell icon for notifications and leave me any questions you've got below. Final episode of 2017. I hope you've enjoyed everything so far. I cannot wait to show you what I've got going on for 2018. And I wanna wish everyone a happy new year and just another year filled with creativity and happiness and health and uh, good success. I'll see you next year, guys.